guys welcome back and it has been quite a while since i posted my last video that's because i tried myself on the udemy and that's why in the channel description you can see uh, two courses on risk five about sorry two courses in udemy on risk five so if you are interested please go ahead and uh, and uh, watch it okay okay so in this i'm going to discuss about the direct versus vector mode in uh, risk five and tort handling so as as the name suggests one is the vector mode that is for every interrupt the execution would jump into a particular address which is specific uh, for that particular uh, interrupt rather than uh, to a common address okay so it would be quite uh, easy if we refer the fe0 sorry fe310 soc uh, manual so first uh, if you have been watching my previous videos then you should have known right now about the empty vec or machine trap vector in trap sorry machine trap vector register which is uh, this is the register and this here or this is not a data register this is a control and status register csr and uh, as per the spec every uh, risk five compliant uh, chips should uh, have the or implement the csr if if that supports the uh, zi csr extension okay so if you go to the description of this so the first two bits are the lsb bits zero and one represent the mode and the 2 to 31 bits represent the address where the execution should jump in case of a trap. And in risk 5 uh, exception and interrupts are uh, covered, are jointly called as trap. So these LSP bit 0 and 1 mode can either be, either have value 0 which is direct mode, or it can have value 1 which is the vector mode. And when it is in vector mode, the execution should uh, jump into the base address. So base address is nothing but the address that is uh, mentioned here from 2 to 31 bits of the same register. And uh, plus four times since it's an, uh, since FE310 is a, a four byte word processor. And here you can see four times uh, m cost dot execution code. That means that what has caused this trap that would be um, stored in the MCOS register, if you scroll down, yeah. Whenever a trap occurs, the, the cause of that would be stored in this register. And this register has a 10 bits field called exception code. And this exception code, um, so the MSB bit, so apart from this exception code, there is a bit which mentions this causes an interrupt or an exception. And uh, so that's the bit number 31. So if it is one, that means it's an interrupt. However, if it is zero, then that means it is an uh, exception, okay? And uh, so these are all the exception codes. So zero to two is reserved and three is machine software interrupt and seven is machine trimer interrupt. So these are all the exception codes. And uh, there are different exceptions and uh, different interrupt and, the, uh, and those codes are here. And now if you go back to the slide. So how this uh, direct versus uh, vector mode differs. Is. So in the empty vec, so in the direct mode, so the LSB bits be zero and in the LSB bits zero and one, which uh, represent the mode as zero and in the vector mode, it is one. And so those two LSB bits are checked. If it is direct, then the execution will directly jump into the, the PC would be loaded into the, whatever the address in the higher two to 31 bits and it would jump there. However, on the vector mode, PC would be loaded into the uh, base address plus four times are the um, exception code, whatever is there in the MCOS would be, um, taken and multiplied by four, that is because uh, each address location uh, would represent one uh, jump to some into the address. For example, 
so this is the base of Rust and uh, for software interrupt, so machine software interrupt, which is, as we saw, the exception code is three. So three times 12. So that's the address the execution would jump into. Okay, and uh, uh, for machine external interrupt, which is uh, exception code is 11. If you see here, yeah, external interrupt is 11. And uh, execution would jump uh, to this address if the empty wake is configured with, with this value. And one other thing to uh, mention is this base address or the bits from 2 to 31 should be uh, 64 byte aligned. That means that uh, 64 is 2 to the power 5, 6, uh, not 2 to the power 5, 5 is 32, 6 is 64. So the last uh, 6 bits wouldn't be uh, honored or it should be 0 to make the address 64 bit aligned. That means that the trap base address uh, should be destined or aligned to a 64 byte address. In other case, uh, sorry, in other words, it's like any address which has the last six bits as zero should be an valid address for uh, this trap base. So now let's uh, get into the coding part. So in the uh, vec sorry, interrupt underscore vector dot s file, So for vector interrupt, if you see here, so this is the trap base for FE310, then on the direct mode, just for every trap, it would just come to the uh, address, whatever is put in the trap base. However, in the vector mode, this would be for exception or MCOS code zero and uh, exception code in the MCOS for one and two and uh, three, okay? So I have mapped this uh, in a such a way that for zero, the this would be executed and for interrupt, or uh, for the exception code one, it will be jumped to a reserved uh, label above and for three, it would jump into the uh, machine interrupt, uh, sorry, software machine interrupt, and uh, sorry, uh, software machine interrupt, and where is seven? Yeah, timer is seven, and external interrupt is 11. If you see here, it would have been ordered in the same way as the, you know, let me keep this side to side. So this is zero, zero, one, two, it is reserved anyway, zero, one, and two. And uh, three is the software machine, uh, machine software interrupt. And four, five are reserved, four, five, six, and seven is the uh, machine timer interrupt. So now if I build and show you this layout, it would be much, easier let me build this now So this is the trap base and uh, base address. And after first, after four bytes, the next instruction is there, which is nothing but uh, jump to reserve. So this layout is in such a way that 
if it is uh, cos 1 or if the exception occurs with an m cos exception code value 3 then it would automatically uh, the execution would jump here and from here it would just execute this and this I have mapped to an corresponding handler and uh, so what, what I'm going to demonstrate here is for external interrupt okay this is the one which would be caused by the UART and uh, I, I would just demonstrate with this you can build and try and enable the machine software and hardware uh, if you want okay but uh, this is what I'm gonna show you how to how to what I'm how I'm gonna demonstrate this I'm just gonna load this onto my uh, HIFI one revision B board and gonna keep a breakpoint here which is the base address and I'm also going to keep a breakpoint in this address so if uh, direct mode is not enabled if it is an interrupt mode then the execution after the interrupt would never go to the base at all it will directly jump into the um, address which is 3ec that's what I'm, I'm just gonna show now for people who are new to this channel uh, I would be using OpenOCD and uh, debugger, Gene debugger to program and debug the code. So now it's uh, programmed and I'm just going to display the next two instructions from the uh, program counter and uh, now let's see the uh, symbol table so that we can get the address of the trap base. So that's the address of the trap base. And this is the address which is base plus four times 11 because 11 is the uh, exception code at MCAS for external interrupt. I'm just gonna keep another breakpoint here. So these are the two breakpoints. So the idea here is to demonstrate that this is in vector mode, the trap, whenever a trap occurs, then the execution would uh, jump into the address, which is vector for that particular uh, trap rather than to the common base. So you might wonder why, you, why it's important uh, because in real time uh, it's very important so the latency is, is something uh, the metrics or the time between an uh, event occurred and how much time the processor takes to start handling that which is called as the interrupt latency which is an important uh, a metric um, to for many systems so it's so in the vector mode the latency can be less because for all on the direct mode for any traps the execution should jump into the trap base and here then in the handler you should check if it is an 
uh, timer interrupt or software interrupt or external interrupt and then again you have to find out uh, which whether it is UART or so that might take some time however in the vector mode uh, the execution would directly uh, jump to the uh, particular address and it can start handling that particular uh, exception or interrupt okay so on the so the downside of that is that you can see that uh, there's a the code size is slightly bigger and uh, I wouldn't say that's bigger so it's so it's, it's always preferred to have a vector mode so now uh, let's see so we, this is the breakpoint and uh, the UART interrupt code when the UART interrupt uh, occurs if the execution jumps into this trap base that means that uh, something is wrong it's not configured properly for the vector mode however if it jumps into this that means that it's it's uh, configured uh, properly and it works yeah, that you see yeah so that's that's pretty much about it and now you can explore and you can go ahead and uh, add more stuff for timer and software enter. okay thank you and uh, see you in the next session